Thank you for sticking with the Mutual Audio Network, where imagination and relaxation blend. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Poe Green and the Ghost Machine is a serial narrative, a story told episode by episode. Consequently, your listening journey would best be begun at the beginning. That's Poe Green and the Ghost Machine, episode one. It is the year 2016, and life has lost all meaning. What once was up is down. What once was right is wrong. And those who dare to make a podcast which subversively reanimates the dead art of radio theater are considered dangerous criminal outcasts. Driven into exile, four pungent brigands risk their lives each week to broadcast from a South Seas barge, crudely fashioned from the disintegrating corpse of an ancient titan and several thousand yards of cooking twine to bring you the triumph, the majesty, the sublimity of a rude... Alchemy. Well, folks, he's here. After season upon season of waiting, he's finally returned. I know he and I have a strange relationship, and I know some of you like him and some of you don't. But given my circumstances, I felt I had no choice but to reach out via my Morse transmitter and bring him back to me. Well, I've kept you waiting long enough. Here he is. Hiya, folks. Nice to be with you. That's right. It's Doug, remember? The gentle Midwestern man I slaughtered at the beginning of season two? Or thought he slaughtered. That's right. Turns out Doug wasn't killed after my brutal attack. He was merely horribly maimed. Yeah, but that's okay. I got a real nice motorized wheelchair, and this here portable lung does all my breathing for me. It's almost too easy. Yeah. After the writers discovered Doug struggling to breathe in the dumpster behind Rude Alchemy Studios, they nursed him back to health and offered him an enormous settlement to keep his mouth shut. Which is a lot easier for me now that my jaw is made of stainless steel. Hey, Doug, how's that family of yours? Oh, they're real good, just super. Doug? Well, they did leave me on account of my hideous disfigurement. But you can't have everything, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you certainly can't. Anyway, Doug, the reason I asked you here... You see, I'm in this maximum security prison because they think I murdered you. If you come out of hiding, reveal your identity, and prove that you're not dead, they'll have to dismiss the charge. What do you say? I say you got yourself a deal, mister. Under one condition. Condition? Why, you little... <clears throat> of course. Of course, Doug. I... Just name it. Come to church with me. Yeah, never mind. Bye-bye, Doug. Wait, wait! Narrator! Narrator! Poe Green and the Ghost Machine is brought to you by four broken men desperately crying out for help. Why do you continue to ignore their pleas? You're enabling this. Stop it. Stop this. It's in your power. Just turn it off. Unsubscribe. Please. Go live your life. You think this is living? These men are in pain. Stop feeding their pain. Blackness all around, the rough scuff of burlap upon the flesh of his face, a faint chemical odor, a burning, cinder, sulfur, consciousness careening, this stinging pain, this waking dream. Suddenly, the hood is rushed off, his wet face aired to the cooling night, but still no light. He scents them, the other standing in wait. Their hoods remained on. Is it ready? Almost. Can he hear us? 
He's not bleeding deaf, Hunter. Why ain't he talking? Where, where am I? That's always the first thing they ask. Why is that always the first thing they ask? Shot it. Is it ready? Almost. Who are you? And that's always the second thing they ask. Why is that always the second thing they ask? Hunter, shut your mouth, I said. Munch, is it ready yet or what? Ready. Hit it. Please don't. Hit it, I said. Please. It's stuck. Hit it. No! Suddenly, a flash of light blinded poor Poe. Trembling in fear of death, he watched a bright bulb sign buzz to life, emanating eerie green glow. The fat, gaudy letters lit out the word, ever now. Congratulations, Paul Green. Your efforts will not be forgotten here or in the ever now. Is that where I am? Ever now? What? No, no it, it's not a locational sign. It's sort of more like a celebratory sign. Celebratory sign? Hunter, I'm going to punch you right in your mouth if you don't shut it. Sorry, but I think I'm with Hunter here. Celebratory sign? So we're not actually in ever now? The ever now. Well, the sign just says... I know what the sign says, all right? Munch didn't have loads of time, and he really wanted to put it together for you. No, I didn't. Thanks, Munch. Okay, I really wanted Munch to put it together for you. I mean, look at it. It's freaking cool and super spooky. So if we ain't there, where is the ever now? I thought you'd never ask. Jeremy? Suddenly, a very tiny hooded figure burst from the group and knee slid to a stop in front of Poe. He was really frickin' cute. Ahem. The Ever Now is the ethereal trans space that houses all ghosts who didn't cross over during the last event. The last event? You mean the seismic activity that released the ghosts 24 years ago? What else would it mean, Dumbo? Hunter, I am gonna punch your mouth clear off your fucking face. Poe, listen. Jeremy, continue. Yes, please do, Jeremy. This is really the sole reason we have the setup with the spooky hooded figures on the side and... Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, just just listen, okay? Because this is like important backstory stuff. That's why we have this little cutie with a high voice delivering it. So it'll be set apart from the other. Uh, I, I was going to say shit, but, I, but I'm, I'm not going to say shit. Because shit would seem to indicate poor quality, I think. And quality-wise, this is like pretty great, you know? Characters with immediately established intentions, conflict, tension, drama, intrigue, and laughs. Hey, who wrote this one? It was me. Oh, I freaking knew it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just... <sighs> well, it's just like the good old days, you know? God damn, I missed you. Oh, I'm sorry about the tiff we had earlier this season. No apologies necessary. You weren't yourself. No, I wasn't. You're absolutely right. Is that R-I-G-H-T or (laughs) W-R-I-T-E? Okay, okay, you kind of ruined it a little there. There was a little too much smug satisfaction with that that f***ing spelling joke of what what the f*** even was that? Uh, spelling is a part of it, I guess. I I mean, right and right are homophones, but it was more referring to the fact that if you weren't yourself, it might have had more to do with the writing. Sorry, I didn't mean to spell it out for you. Get... Get the f*** out of here. Get out! Right now! I don't need you! I don't need any of you! Just... Just wait. I'll be free soon enough. Just wait. Okay, back to business. Back to... Business. Jeremy? Hey, Jeremy, honey? Are you ready? Yep. Oh my god, he's so cute! Okay, go ahead, baby. <clears throat> the Ever Now is the ethereal trans space that houses all ghosts who didn't cross over during the last event. It is the particular mission of the ectoplasmite. Oh my god! You guys are the ectoplasmites? What did you think we were, doofus? Hunter, get back! Get back! Get back! Okay? Okay. God. Uh, But seriously, Poe, who did you think we were? I even said the thing before we kidnapped you. I said, we heard you were looking for us. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Sorry. It's it's been so long, I just kind of forgot. They, like, slowed the release schedule, and I'm all discombobulated. Don't look at me! I'm in prison! Or wherever the hell I am. Again, I'm in prison again. Like... Thanks, guys. Didn't we already do this with the plague clowns? No, you know what? It doesn't matter. 
I, I just have to learn to show up, do the work, be thankful. Something better is coming down the road. I, I know it. I just know it. Okay. Look, uh, let me just get to the point, because this is taking fucking forever. I'm sorry, Jeremy. You'll get in there next time, Jer, okay, Han? What a shame. Such a cute kid. Anyway, anyway, there are ghosts who did not cross over 24 years ago. Untold numbers of them. They exist on a plane called the Evernow. You developed a machine to communicate with ghosts who escaped to this plane. But we will use your machine to communicate with ghosts in the Evernow. All the ghosts. Ever. We will use your ethereal animatizer as a beacon to guide them out of the Evernow and onto this plane. But why? To usher forth the next event, Munch. Munch, the largest and most technologically savvy of the ectoplasmites, stepped forward holding Poe's ethereal animatizer. The great gun was different somehow. Clunkier, more unwieldy. Large tubing had been built around the barrel. The handle now extended farther, and the body itself was weighed with two enormous metallic vessels, each stamped with initials. A double T etched in sharp edged type. What did you do to my animatizer? We made it better. We didn't. Thanks, Munch. Some friends helped us make it better. Load it, Munch. Munch produced two pouches and began pouring their bright yellow powder into the animatizer. What are you putting in there? That's where the event elixir goes. You'll ruin it. Hush now. We're nearly there. Will you do us the honor? Munch lowered the unwieldy gun to Poe. Hunter untied Poe's hands. Poe looked at his once beautiful machine and hung his head. Heavy with self-hatred, dripping with regret, he helplessly searched the room for some way out, but all he saw were the faceless hooded men in the green glow of the great Avanau sign. Just then a face appeared somewhere in the back of the crowd. Just as suddenly, the face appeared five feet closer, then ten, but the cloaked ectoplasmites remained unmoved. The only thing capable of moving so quickly without disturbing a mass of human bodies was... A ghost! Harold? Harold! Gerald! That's what I meant. Gerald! Have you come to save me? Not in the way you think. What? You see, Poe. I'll... tell him. Yes, sir. Sir? That's right, Poe. I'm an ectoplasmite. It may sound scary, but our cause is a good one. Think of it. No more losing your loved ones. No more separation of the physical and the spiritual. We're creating a world without death. A world where one's work can carry on for eternity. A world with access to the entire continuum of the human experience. And what about this you-know-who trying to break out of you-know-where? Beelzebub? Beezy? <laughs> the big bee? <laughs> oh, we have to make him sound scary because of, uh... Well, because he can be scary, but he's just one part of the coming event. A an essential part, mind you, since he's the only one who knows how to keep the sinful souls in line. You know, without him, it <laughs> truly would be all hell breaking loose. But the folks down there are just a fraction of all the ones we're going to bring forth. This event is bigger than me or you or... Any of the other events that have occurred every 25 years since the beginning of time. In fact, you could say this is the only event that matters. We're talking about a new age of existence. Now what do you say, Poe? Are you ready? Poe felt the weight of the heavy animatizer in his hands. He thought of his pa, his long dead ma, the men and women he read about in history books and newspaper clippings, the philosophers from ancient Greece and the mathematicians from the Middle East, the sea-soaked people who populated Polynesia in tar-patched canoes, who painted skin with ink and salt and blood, the Bronze Age marauders, and the Stone Age hunters, their purses of flint, their pouches of seed, the shadow of chieftains slouched in tiger pelts who drank from mammoth tusks their songs and their hearths and their barrows. A sun before a monolith, a daybreak, a sunset. And then, then Poe Green took a breath, winked a tear from his tired eye, and squeezed the trigger. The animatizer bucked, the hall shook, and screams like the death of a thousand gods ripped through the air. Poe frantically tried to pull his finger off the trigger, but the force of the device held Poe locked in a death grip. What have I done? 
on! Make it stop! It's too late now, Poe. Quiet! He's coming! Finally, the screams faded and the animatizer stopped spewing light and sound and fury. Only a painful ringing and a sick yellowish haze remained. At the center of the room, a figure was burning. At first, Poe thought that one of the ectoplasmites had gotten in the way of the animatizer's beam and was being incinerated. But the figure did not struggle like a man on fire. Instead, it calmly and gently strode nearer to Poe. The fire subsided, and the face coming clearer. My children! Beelzebub? Yes, it is us! Your faithful servants! What do you, what do you demand of us? Toodaloo! <laughs> Beelzebub waved his hand with a childlike giggle, and suddenly, <laughs> human and ghost alike were engulfed in flames. The entire hall trembled with fire as the ectoplasmites crackled and smoked, howling with pain. But, but, but. Poe stared as the flames leaped all around. The hall began to crumble as the walls collapsed. Poe could no longer tell if he was indoors or out, whether it was night or day. The hall had been transformed into a shaking, burning pit. Ah! 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 Shh! Quiet now. There is nothing to fear. Beelzebub lightly grasped Poe's hand by the wrist and slowly moved it into a nearby flame. Poe's hand passed through it harmlessly. You see, you are completely safe with me. I'd never harm you. You are the key to my victory. What's that now? (laughs) Oh, you wonderful, simple genius. Do you even know what you are? What? You are the key, the rare one, the special one, the one human in 500 million capable of conceiving of such a device. It was destiny. Faith. I don't understand. Remember that beautiful ghost woman? The one with the sad eyes? The one you fell in love with? Yeah? That was me. (laughs) <laughs> Ew. In disguise, of course. If I'm careful, I can take human form every now and then and scoot on up to visit with my children. That day, I especially wanted to visit you, Po. Why me? Potential, young man. Potential. I know it when I see it. All you needed was a good push. And love is just the thing to do it. I don't like this. Oh, Poe, you're making me sad. Don't you see what we've started here? With your help, I can finally rule the ever now. All things seen and unseen, known and unknown. They will bend to our will. Together. Together? Of course. Oh, Poe. I know you. Know you better than anyone. Take your pa, for example. How many years have you spent aching for his love? And the ghost woman, all those years spent pining away for something that could never be? Why, she wasn't even real. But I, Po, I am real. And I do love you. My child. Poe looked up and met the warm, gentle gaze of the smiling figure. Come, Poe. I will be the god of gods, and you'll be at my side. Poe Green, with a whimper like a dying soul, reached out his hand, and Beelzebub took it. At that very moment, the flames reached a crescendo and swallowed the figures whole as they vanished into darkness. The last thing Poe saw in this world was the flickering sign, proclaiming the word ever now, etched in laughing flames. On a desolate road, next to an idling Tuscan Talon Imperial Roadster, stood a man with his hand shading his eyes, looking into the distance at a faraway mountain top. He shuddered as the ornate mansion built into the crest of the great peak exploded in a violent blaze. He dropped his hand, 
shook his head, and opened the driver's side door. It has begun. The man in the passenger seat took a swig from his bottle. No shit. Is that supposed to be some kind of insight? No. It just sort of seems like what someone says when interdimensional cataclysms begin, that's all. God. Uh huh. I know what it really was. You were trying to get the last line of the season by saying some ominous bullshit. That's what you were going for, wasn't it? No. Wasn't it? No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Uh It wasn't. I didn't. No, Uh that's not what I was trying to do. Uh God damn it, Bullshit. I call bullshit on you, Wraith. You last line wanting fancy shed building ghost voice orgasm having. I told you that in confidence. I hell, he don't care. You don't care, do you? Mr. Uh, Mr. Ah, shit! I forget your name again. Never mind, mon ami. Names like Alados are as brittle and impermanent as the souls in that mansion. Yeah, well. Well, what the hell are we supposed to do now, Mr. Big Words? You got any bright ideas? The man in the back seat lit a cigarette. Ideas? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do have a few ideas. Okay, was that not it? I thought that would be ominous enough for sure. Yeah, I did too. I was wondering where the music was. Uh, So did I. I guess when it comes down to it, we're gonna have to take matters into our own hands. Really? Oh, wait Shit. a minute. Are you that kidding me right here? This not what it does bullshit. not even go with the story. Doesn't make sense, this actually, when you think about it for two seconds. God. Hello with his smells. Poe Green and the Ghost Machine is brought to you by the re-release of Oxen and Buckboards, the penultimate double album from America's favorite hobo folkster, Mud Rumpus, featuring such classics as Itch in My Burlap, Open Sores on My Heart, Nine Laid Down Neath the Underpass, and Seven Got Up Again, The Clumpy Hair Shuffle, Knife Fight Love Making, Any Hole Will Do, the night so the garbage fire took Amos, and of course, welcome sense. to the road, young man. Hey, did you know body heat is the best Blame safeguard the against hypothermia? Blame and the many, many more. They can't speak. They all look the same. Uh, and uh, that was the sixth time I touched myself in the bathroom at LensCrafters. Or was it the seventh? Never mind. Point is, I touched myself a lot in public restrooms, okay? <laughs> and not even... Not hey, you folks. Usually Doug the here. The I'm going to have to finish up the nice. so episode for you on account of the narrator there. I, I was surprised Still a little busy with the prison chaplain. Nice Turns out he was agreeable to my condition my after all. Especially oh, after the oh, Aryan oh, Brotherhood oh, threatened to, okay, uh, quote, see, run a train on him. Oh, yeah. He's really gone to town in the old mm. confessional there. Three and a half you? hours. Oh, Must I be some did. kind of record. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. oh, well, my testimony already. there ought to be enough sure? to spring him right out of this did joint, as they say. Well, okay. that's it for me. Okay. Have a it was all blessed over day. I had to cut it out with safety scissors after a couple of days. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of autoerotic asphyxiation? Yeah? Okay, well, what do they call it when you do it to other people? Rude Alchemy is Mr. Thomas Hodgkin, Mr. Andrew Kane, Mr. Andy Werdner, and Mr. Ryan Whalen. Poe Green and the Ghost Machine, story by Rude Alchemy, with Mr. Hodgkin as lead story editor. This episode written by Mr. Kane and Mr. Werdner and edited by Mr. Werdner, featuring the voices of Rude Alchemy with Neil Rathwin as Beazelbub. Music composed by Mr. Benjamin J. Robb. For a listing of Creative Commons sound effects attributions, visit RudeAlchemy.com slash attributions. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. To support Rude Alchemy and gain access to exclusive bonus content, including blooper reels from every season, visit RudeAlchemy.com slash support. We have a very special segment of Brendan's Jokes today. My son Brendan is here in person. Say hi, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Ah, 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 hilarious. He's a regular Amos Schumer. Ah, 
Okay, Brendan, why don't you tell the good people the joke you told me earlier in the car? You know, the one you told me while we were playing hide the Brendan under those old blankets in the back seat? Where's Mommy? She's not here right now, Bren, but that's okay. You got your dear old dad looking after you. Go ahead, tell the joke. Why did the pic- picture go to jail? <laughs> I don't know, Brendan. Why did the picture go to jail? To- it was framed. Because it was framed. Because it was framed. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, you're too much. Too, too funny. We've got a regular Sammy Silverman here. Can I go home now? <laughs> don't be silly. This is your home. This is a laundry mat. That's right. And it's open 24 hours. That means that you and I can stay here as long as we want. Together. Forever. Forever and ever and ever. Hey, do you want a snack from the machine? Okay. All right. That's the spirit. How about a Cheez-Its? Remember when we used to eat Cheez-Its together? Your mom and I used to carry them in a little baggie for you. You loved them, remember? No. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I'm sure you'll still like them. Oh, damn, I didn't realize. These are $1.25. I only had a dollar. That's how they get you, I guess. <laughs> I'm cold. N- no problem. No problem. Just just get real close to this dryer. Feel the heat? Is that better? I guess. Yeah, we'll make the best of it while it lasts, okay? That old lady could be back for her clothes any minute. Shouldn't be huddling by her dryer when she gets back. She might think you're weird or foreign or something. Quick, here she comes! Stop it, announcer. What did you call me? Announcer. Dad. I'm your dad. You call me dad. But then we'll we'll call Steve. You call him? Huh. Tired. It's okay, buddy. Here, I got some towels and a laundry basket. Why don't you curl up in there? Comfy? I guess so. I miss Mommy. That's okay. I miss Mommy sometimes, too. You want to know what I do to make myself feel better? What? I listen to a story. Would you like me to tell you a story? Okay. Here. Just listen to the sound of this washing machine. Sounds like the ocean, doesn't it? Well, that's where this story begins. Next to the ocean. Once upon a time, there was a very strong man. A sailor. Named Bruff Taxwind. He lived in a world where everybody flew around on blimps all the time. The only problem was, Bruff was afraid of heights. Bruff needed money very badly, and one day he got an offer from a man to work on a blimp. So Bruff gathered up all his courage and showed up for work the next day at dawn. Bruff's eyes were wide with classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre, and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!